What a nice sleepy Saturday morning. And there we are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to another live stream. Today is May 16th, 2020. And we're doing a comic book reading. Okay, we got two choices of books today. One of them is Atomic Combat, Atomic Age Combat Number One by St. John Publications that came out in 1958. And the other one is Alarming Tales Number Six that came out in 1958 from, from Harvey Publications. Spider Man, how are you doing? Hope life as well. Brett Kelly 69. Let's go. Let's read some comics on this beautiful Sunday for my part of the world. Anyway, rainy, not Sunday, Saturday, rainy Saturday morning. Okay. How are you doing, folks? Today is an amazing day because we're doing comic books right on Spider-Man. Oh, man. This is going to be going to be uh, a hard, cho hard choice. But we're going to read the other one tomorrow. So we're doing two comic book readings, one today, one tomorrow. We're going to read one today, one tomorrow. That covers the original four books we picked from these live streams and readings that we're going to do. And then we kicked it up to six. So we're sort of cycling through, going through um, my collection, right? And uh, after we do these two readings, I'll go through my collection again and pick out five books, uh, five or six books that we'll get a chance to read next time and we'll choose one and read them and maybe we'll do a little uh you know survey to see what type of books people would like to read maybe i'll pull out we do still have a lot of books that we have to read from seating reading set number four so maybe i'll just pull those out uh we'll decide we'll decide aside from that i'm gonna do my little intro uh, to these live streams that we're sort of uh been doing uh, for the last couple of months now uh, but those of you that want to find out what this channel is about I am on patreon and that's where I share a lot of uh, information I post everything that we're loading up to YouTube BitChute, and now SoundCloud as well and I share some pictures and there's a sort of a lowdown of uh, what my main thesis is what it is that uh, I want to do right and uh, what we're working towards uh, so if you want to support this project uh, patreon is a fantastic way to support this project and I don't put anything behind the paywall so you can just follow the work and uh, keep up to date and if there's a there's a uh, period that you do have the funds that you do want to support this this work through funds patreon is a fantastic way to go about it okay we are live streaming this on twitch and if you want to catch these live streams twitch is where you want to be at okay um, and supporting uh, this work through twitch by subscribing and uh, yeah spider-man I'm noticing that's why I'm laughing we have sort of auto bot command set up where uh, we can type in patreon Twitter and stuff like this and different commands we have on, on uh, twitch chat but none of the commands are popping up uh, which is glitches in the system glitches in the system right uh, but if you do want to support this work by subscribing or uh, following on twitch is a fantastic way to support this work as well uh, I do announce these live streams about 30 minutes before we go live on Twitter gabs minds VK and Elo, and all the links will be this in the description of the videos and audio and we are uploading uh, recording the audio on a lot of these things a lot of the live streams that we're doing and we're gonna be loading them on to SoundCloud okay and I am gonna record the reading on our lapel mic and maybe we'll get a chance if it I'm not sure how a comic book reading in an <laughs> in a podcast format will sound on SoundCloud but we'll record the uh, the reading part of it on the lapel mic and see where it goes uh, because I'm not recording this right now on the lapel mic so this part will not be loaded onto SoundCloud okay uh, uncharted A's hey Chicho hope you you and chat are doing well we're doing well thank you very much uh, welcome welcome to another live stream Fallot randomly saying hello and leaving in 
instantaneously stay tuned i bet these comics are great fun too but i am not that old cheers ah okay Nef nefet Nef yeah, i don't know how to pronounce your name thank you for popping by and saying hello feline juice how are you doing great conversation on last uh yesterday's live stream by the way gang fantastic catholic traditionalist how are you doing good afternoon folks working in my lab today so i will be in lurk mode for most of the stream awesome i hope you enjoyed uh reading in the discussion catholic traditionalist and uh aside from that we're going to be loading this video onto youtube and bitshoot okay we're loading everything on bitshoot and uh depending on what the sensors are permitting on youtube uh so not everything's going to go on youtube and if you do like this work uh subscribing through uh or becoming a youtube member is also a fantastic way to support this project low key star how are you doing coming home from my local comic book and game store and right into chicho reading comics what an evening peace brother peace brother your comic shop is open eh my comic shop in my part of the world is not open uh, so they're still closed here i don't know when they're going to be opening up maybe this week coming up i'm not sure i know diamond comics isn't shipping until end of may i believe hope you're doing well the troll artist how are you doing how is life nicholas going to be lurking as well working on paperwork at home awesome nicholas hope you enjoy the reading uh we'll we'll be doing this today and tomorrow same time tomorrow as well All right 10 a.m fun stuff fun stuff so we're getting people rolling in notifications going out x how are you doing hope you're doing well elder god i just woke up 13 hours sleep wow 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 you were yeah last night we finished uh what time did we finish around uh, 9 p.m last night so we're starting off at 10 a.m so that's 13 hours so you just you slept after our live stream yesterday elder god and woke up to this live stream today this morning <laughs> fun talking about extraterrestrials yesterday uh aliens and alter alternate dimensions to reading comic books and the comic books are pretty much the right theme right adam h combat and alarming tales with ufo cover fun stuff fun stuff let me take down these uh things i have popped up here regarding youtube all the links that we have on here and where is that twitch take the twitch off as well oh look at the mad mad legends that's the way you should be spider-man yeah it's open but only with three customers at the same time ah okay so sometimes you have to wait haha <laughs> okay and are they is our new comics shipped i don't think so i have a bunch of comics that uh, i still have to pick up from my comic book store uh, because everything got locked down so i know there was stuff coming in the troll artist thank you very much for the tier one sub uh appreciate it so sometimes you have to wait papa graham oi how are you doing how are you doing so gang should we take a little poll which one uh should we read which uh which comic are you guys into reading today we got i'll give you the lowdown but um i'll also uh say what each comic is when we start the reading right i'm worried about the comic book store i think we have the biggest local comic book store in the country but i'm still worried about them yeah graham my guess is there's going to be some uh folding of unfortunately i think some comic book stores are going to close up uh, which is which is really sad to see actually and we're seeing a major shakeup in the comic book industry uh dc comics just announced uh, a few weeks ago that they're not going to be exclusive with diamond distributors anymore so i think i oops i think this is going to be a positive thing uh we're seeing the distributor uh i guess we're seeing a second phase of the distributor wars where we're getting rid of one monopoly right so we'll see how things play out it might be an amazing time to open up a comic book store if certain comic book stores fold in your area okay felix how are you doing hey chicho and chichonians definitely alarming tales definitely alarming tales and this has the ant-man prototype okay 
this is the major story the one we want to read for sure and we're going to read some of the other ones is uh, by al williamson and angela torres and it's the first Ant-Man prototype the atom age combat it's the artwork is by dick Ayers. so they're both giants that have been working on both of them right i vote adam age so we got one vote per right now okay randall how are you doing hello all how are you doing chicho and what are you snacking on i'm not snacking on anything when i'm reading comic books in general i don't have food with me i do have tea take a look i do have my tea and i got a little bit of water because i got uh, black tea and uh, it's with ginger this time no mint okay but i keep liquids far away from my comic books uh so i try to protect these as best as i can right i don't i don't take any risks when it comes to comic books uh, and no food i had a nice big cereal this morning got to be alarming tales we got two votes for alarming tales thanks graham for the vote i think i think you do a poll in stream we should definitely look into uh, look at that yeah we should look into that actually actually yeah we can do a poll in the streams you know what uh for the next comic book reading i'll have a poll up where people can vote okay case man how are you doing welcome welcome oh the god russ Boop, doop, doo -choo. <laughs> fun what's up case man i vote alarming tales so we got uh, so far we got three alarming tales one the adam age combat ginger is my to go to yeah ginger randall i agree with randall ginger tea is amazing okay we got four votes for uh alarming tales two votes for adam age i vote alarm uh five votes for alarming tales so alarming tales is is getting ahead okay uh, and we read this today we read this tomorrow okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hook up my uh external mic okay just tape it down and make sure there's going to be no loose connections or whatnot so it doesn't go you know it's a little bit i need an upgrade to this but with tape it works okay so i'm gonna lock this up and so far we got five to one for alarming tales and i've uh, i've already i've actually i couldn't hold off when i got the comic book when i found out that the alarming tales was the ant-man prototype i did read the ant-man prototype story i was very excited about it uh and i'll give you i'll give you guys a little lowdown when we do the recording um and i'm going to read you a little thing that i've read before i believe uh, when i was giving the intros to these because these were choices that we had for reading as well right uh previously but i'll read him again uh just so people get a feel for the importance of this book it's kind of interesting that you are recording the audio it's like an old school radio science science file. that's exactly Graham that's exactly the feeling I'm I'm gonna be shooting for right I should have maybe recorded this section of it as well but I think uh, what I want to do because I don't I want to cut back on my editing process right what I want to do is just upload the reading part of it but i think next time i'm going to record from the beginning of the stream um, because the audio is not uh, consuming too much power on my computer to just cut out the beginning part of it uh, but we are going to be uploading the video of this to bitchute and youtube so this is uh you know we, we have sort of layers happening and redundancy happening which is a great thing to do when we're talking about decentralization right so what should we do gang should we go alarming tales we got five to five to two five to two last we got i'll give you whoever wants to read whichever one it is right so far we got alarming tales winning right but if you get a whole bunch of adam age we read this one first uh today and this one tomorrow a uh, couple of more minutes and we're gonna go with whichever one gets the highest vote right we'll just give everyone a little bit of time to roll in to the stream because uh i don't think anyone wants to miss the beginning of the reading of this right adam age combat we've got three for adam age what's the uh audio word for visage uh, i don't know what do you mean 
<laughs> oh my god you and your riddles you throw me off so much uh i have to decipher uh some of the stuff you're saying so we got three alarming tales uh and six adam age uh sorry we got th yeah three uh six alarming tales and three adam age soundscape soundscape visage really ground ah that's interesting fun 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 should we do okay gang we're going alarming tales ah atom age combat and you know what from the comic books we listed at the beginning at the beginning where we're gonna you know we had a selection of a whole bunch of things to read i really wanted to my first choice was the was the love one that we read the romance comic that we read right my second choice was adam age combat just so you know where i stood on it i'm very curious to see what this is all about and this one because i had read it uh it wasn't in the top two for me but i guess this one alarming tales was my first one because it was the ant map prototype and i read it it's rare that i read a comic book unless i've already read it way before when we're doing uh when i started doing comic book readings right we've done some readings a fair bit of readings of comic books that i have read in the past right but if i know i'm going to do a comic book reading during the stream i don't read the comic book um before i shoot the video or before we do the stream okay are there any legal percussions show uh showing full comic panels in a stream and uh, not that i've encountered so far big c but i can tell you this all the comic book readings that i've loaded up from marvel dc uh saint john's uh, golden age comics valiant comic all of these comics that i've uploaded right comic book readings have uploaded in the last six years how many years have, have i been doing comic book readings i don't know all of these comic book readings have been uploaded i've never been hit with a copyright claim i've never hit, been hit by any creator saying hey uh the, the, with with one exception any creator saying hey or any publishers coming up to me saying you can't do this uh, don't do this because i consider this promotion for the books i i can't tell you and i've lost track of how many people have contacted me saying chicho thank you very much for doing these comic book readings i wasn't a comic book reader collector and i started reading comic books because of your comic book readings i can't tell you how many people have had contact me saying oh my god i had never read that story before thank you very much that was a fantastic story i started collecting going back and buying these comic books because of this reading i've even had creators of comic books okay joshua dysart one of my favorite writers at present right now and for the last since 2012 when valiant comics came on the scene joshua dysart was one of the first writers that started working for valiant comics we did a reading of death of uh, fall of harbinger okay book of death fall of harbinger which was um joshua dysart writing and i forget who the artist was and stuff like this right and joshua dysart the writer of the comic book commented that it was a fantastic reading was very meditative and he said thank you very much for doing this and i was like a fanboy i was like oh wow i can't believe you commented thank you i'm glad you liked it it was a pleasure it was a fantastic book and everything right however i did one reading of an independent creator their comic book because i came across it at a friend's place when i'd gone to a festival on the island here and she had these comic books from these creators and they're amazing it, they were very good comic books beautiful artwork and stuff i did the intro for the comic book and all that jazz and i read the comic book and then i had the creator contact me saying hey you're violating our rights and stuff like this take that comic book down right i was like what i said listen dude i've had because after we did that reading people were like oh where can i get this comic book i never heard about this comic book it was totally independent underground comic book right i said look man like this is more promotion than anything right like people have contacted me saying oh this is a great reading they're trying to find your books and then i sent the email to them and the person I, i'm not sure if he replied or not initially and then i waited a couple of hours and i just felt a little disgusted 
of an independent creator not appreciating an in another independent creator sharing the love of something they had created right because their their issue was you read that whole comic i was like dude i showcased four other i think it was four other comics that they had published right mentioning to people in that in that reading that hey you guys should go get these comics because they're really good right uh so i didn't even wait for the guy to reply i took it down and i will never ever read a comic book from them again and i will never ever buy a comic book from them again if any creator holds on to these mickey mouse walt disney uh instigated copy archaic uh copyright laws that are taking information readings uh things that should be coming into the public domain out of the public domain as far as i'm concerned they can kiss my ass okay uh, i don't care what they produce i'm going a little hard on this but because of all these censorship and copyright and people being deplatformed, i'm i'm a very adamant uh against supporting any creators any writers any publishers any company that prevents people from enjoying art okay that's my take and i can honestly tell you if we get any copyright any infringement stuff from any publisher i will stop reading all their books okay i will stop buying their books i will stop pulling their books and we will definitely stop reading their books okay because there are amazing amazing comic books produced during the golden age of comics that we could do readings for for 50 years really we could do readings for one a week for 50 years and never have to read the same comic again and there'll be thousands upon thousands of additional comic books that we could read that we didn't read in the comic book readings uh, that's my take okay uh, it's time for me it's time to sort of be a little bit more hard about this stuff who's really looking most of these people are dead yeah the companies want their copyright claims right New York comics sort of but old stuff not really um, yeah newer comics like i did the reading for the new valiant comics right because i love those comics because valiant comics people weren't aware of them right because the big two you know do so much marketing and it's it's the you know bread and butter for the comic book retailers but the independent creators are some of the best comic book stories that you'll find right spider-man worst case if he re-uploads on youtube he gets a claim by the company but only with brand new stuff yeah and even brand new stuff i think it should be part of the public domain uh, to a certain degree we should be able to do this right like one person contacted me saying oh you did the batman reading the venom reading that elder god really likes right that's how we found our channel right when we did the the venom story arc for batman when he was taking the steroids and stuff like this that batman story arc the five issues is one of my favorite batman reads story arcs ever right and someone contacted me saying hey aren't you infringing on copyrights for i go look dude batman has thousands of stories out there if you take that batman reading it's like taking a five second clip out of a two-hour movie and sharing it right it's promotion for Batman for DC and that's the way I look at it Nikki Hickey what's up guys Nikki here ready for some comics what's up brother hey man love the comic stream awesome uh, Blunden what what reading Dysart yeah Nikki Hickey when Dysart left a comment on uh, that valiant uh, fall of blood a fall of harbinger reading I was I was pretty pumped man I was pretty pumped only cares about the money and as far as I'm concerned if you're an independent creator that you only care about the money you're you're you sold out before you created anything the greed the greed the greed let me know Chicho case man hell yeah tell them Chicho <laughs> and by the way I had people contact me after i took down the video 
saying, hey, Chicho, you had a, it was a, a story about witches and esoteric stuff. And Chicho, you had a comic book reading about a witch. It was this, this. It was really good. But I can't find it anymore. I, I told him this. I go, the artist wanted me to take it down. Um, so I'm not, I'm not supporting them at all. Okay. My Mickey Mouse gif <laughs> just got a shout out. <laughs> nice elder god. I hope Valiant is aware of the very real Chicho uh, pump. I uh, bump. I maybe, but I know a lot of people have jumped onto the. A fair number of people have jumped onto Valiant comics because of the videos and the readings and just me talking about Valiant comics a lot. I became a fr frantic Valiant lover. It started at Chicho. Ah, nice, Nikki. Awesome. How much did these comics cost? Ah, good question. Uncharted Ace. The Adam Age Combat. Okay. I bought these in the last year, let's say. This one, it's graded at good minus. Okay. I paid eleven fifty for the Adam Age Combat. Eleven fifty Canadian. Uh, eighteen uh, eight dollars and fifteen twenty cents twenty five cents US okay the Adam H combat graded at good minus and it was a great deal fantastic deal the alarming tales okay it's graded at good very good I believe yeah good very good and I ended up paying a fantastic deal okay eight fifty Canadian for this six thirty US for this okay great deal ant map prototype uh lots of amazing creators on here i jumped on valiant just before lockdown i love their work yeah awesome uncharted ace awesome let's do the reading gang let's do the reading let me take this down serious question popped up during the valiant uh during the intro to this right let me turn this on let me turn this on and I'm gonna take down the chat on the screen here that's popping up and I'm gonna turn off notifications as well because and I'm gonna turn off my screen as well because we just want to do the reading right we're here to appreciate the comic book uh, so let me turn these guys off okay the notifications is going off the chat is going off okay and I'm gonna take down and I'm gonna take down my camera as well enjoy the comic Chicho and chat enjoy the reading gang I hope I do it justice I'll see you guys after the reading oh my god Don't <laughs> move the move the screen as you can tell I'm pretty excited about this reading right I get excited about all the comic book readings let me turn on the audio for this and apologies about the glare that's why I had the thing under it right okay let me turn this audio on test test nice I'm just gonna put a little timestamp just in case I'm gonna take the visual of this in and maybe just load up the reading without the intro we'll see Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to our channel and uh, welcome to another comic book reading. And we're doing a live stream reading of this comic book. And the comic we're gonna read today is Alarming Tales number six. It's the last issue of the series published by Harvey Publications. Okay, and this comic book came out in 1958 and it has the approved comic book uh code on it right so this is uh 1958 1956 is sort of considered uh, the beginning of the silver age the end of the golden age right so this is the beginning of the silver age of comics and there's a lot of amazing artists that have worked on this comic book and what i'm going to do right now is just take this out of the plastic uh, bag take it out of the bag and board so we don't get the glare on the camera 
so we can take a look at this thing and i'm going to give you a little intro to this comic and this comic by the way is graded at good very good okay uh for the last few years i've been putting sort of the uh, grade on the comic books that i've been buying that way i know what grade i bought the books at so it's graded at good very good and i ended up paying 850 canadian uh, 630 us for this which is an amazing deal amazing deal because it has some fantastic uh, giants in the industry working on this comic book and it's also it also contains the ant-man prototype okay and ant-man made his first appearance uh officially in 1962 i believe and um, i'm gonna read you a little write-up that i found okay actually let me read you the write-up for this uh before we take a look at the book but let me tell you um who the artists who the creators are that have worked on this thing okay so as i mentioned this is the last issue issue number six of this series alarming tales right and alarming tales number one two three four five had jack kirby working on them as well okay this is the only issue from this series that jack kirby did not work on okay and the people that have worked on this are john severn ray bailey fred kida paul reenman al williamson angelo torres okay and the cover is by john severn and it's got the ufo cover and the ufo covers are extremely sought after from the golden age and silver age of comics early silver age anyway from the 1950s uh, it's uh, it's it's a pretty important book and this thing really reminds me of uh, the movie um, the day the earth stood still right and sci-fi comic books from the 1940s 50s were some of the most amazing comic books you could read they're absolutely fantastic right and the cover for this says uh the new dimension of suspense alarming tales alarming tales in november number six 10 cent cover and a comic book code approved a thrill adventure take a look at this logo right and it is harvey publications right ambassador from outer space and that's the reason why this thing really reminds me of uh, the day the earth stood still and that's a black and white movie and i believe it came out in 1950s where the spaceships lands in new york and the big robot comes uh, comes out and uh, it's an um, it's a fantastic movie by the way fantastic movie that was also remade but before we get into this let me read you this little write-up and i take notes uh when i do the readings of these things right um and i can give you the names here i mean john severin and the numbers uh, uh that you see here that i've written down on my notes here where it says john severin 936 john severin has 936 comic books to his credit right what what an amazing creator and he was huge for in ec comics and front frontline combat some of the war comics some of the western comics and he was uh he was one of the founding cartoonists of mad from 1952 right so mad magazine and just amazing right the guy john severn was responsible for creating some of the most amazing pieces of work that we've had the pleasure uh to read right and then we have um uh, bernard bailey right he was a uh, comic book creator. he created the uh, co-creator specter and uh, uh our man he has 439 uh comic books to its credit fred kidda uh, had a hundred and nine hundred and twenty eight comic books to his credit he worked on um with atlas comics that's pre-marvel right we have uh 
Ch Al Williamson, 929 comic books to his credit. Well, Paul Riemann, 588 comic books to his credit. Uh, Angelo Torres, 171 comic books uh, to his credit. And Al Williamson is absolutely huge as well. Work for EC Comics and, uh, and a number of other uh, amazing, amazing uh, publishers, right? And Paul Riemann is known as uh, Jack Kirby's frequent inker. He worked on War Comics, Golden Age Comics. He worked on the Incredible Hulk number one from 1962, X-Men number one to five uh, from 1963, the Avengers number one, three, and five from 1963 and 1964. Like the number of people that are contributed to this comic book from 1958 is just mind-blowing right but here's the quote uh, that i'm going to read you and i pulled this off of a comic book ebay listing that i found online because i was looking to buy more of these things uh alarming tales if you find an amazing comic that you that you really want sometimes i go out personally and i buy a few copies of it either trying to upgrade or if i can get amazing deals on them right as a collector that is what i do right but here's the write-up regarding this comic book quote this listing is for a sweet copy alarm and this isn't the listing that it was uh, talking about it was another listing that i found after the fact that the uh, the comic was uh, no longer for sale right quote this listing is for a sweet copy of Alarming Tales number six by Harvey Comics from 1958. This series was an early Jack Kirby, Al Williamson, and John Severn sci fi horror series, though this specific issue was not worked on by Kirby. What makes this book famous is that there is a backup story, The King of Ants, which was created by John Severn while he was working at Harvey Comics as well as Marvel Comics at the time. While this story did not get much notori notoriety, it did grab the attention of Jack Kirby, who worked on all the other issues of the series. At the time, Jack Kirby was working with John Severn on the series, as well as Tales to Astonish and Strange Tales for Marvel Comics. So they took the concept back to Marvel Comics and did the first Ant-Man prototype in Tales of Suspense, which met with mixed reviews. Leading up to the creation of Hank Pyre, the original Ant-Man and star of the major motion picture by Marvel. That makes this the very first prototype of Ant-Man character. Sadly, grades low, and the guy goes just a little write up what it grades at, right? Now, if you're checking online, if you go to Wikipedia, you will not find Ant-Man, the creators of Ant-Man, Al Williamson, John Severn, or Angelo Torres being credited as being the creators of Ant-Man because this is considered to be the Ant-Man prototype, right? So if you're a comic book collector, if you're following comic books, you're really curious, and there is a lot of more research a lot more information that we 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 need to dig up regarding these amazing human artifacts that we have had over the last 100 years or so 100 plus years or so right because there are creators that created characters created universes that aren't credited with creating those characters or those universes right should the question that we should ask ourselves should John Severn and Al Williamson and Angelo Torres be credited with being the creators or at least the co-creators of Ant-Man? Because on Wikipedia, it's not their names are not in the write-up of the wiki article. And I've checked a few other websites. Some websites say a couple of places I believe I came across where it says Al Williamson and John Severn were part of the minds that created Ant-Man okay and I think that's uh, that's uh, something to which we need to think about now as, as I mentioned this is graded and good very good right uh, take a look at this thing this thing has a little bit of tape on the spine 
right? So good, very good. I believe that's a grading of around three, right? Take a look at this thing. I'm just showing a close up of the comic. So you get a good feeling of what the grade of this would be considered, right? The cover is attached, right? So, and there is some, well, not some, a fair bit of wear and tear on the cover, right? Take a look. Nice close up. UFOs, UFOs, UFOs. Let's, let's take a look at the back cover. And there's tape on the back cover as well. Right. The most amazing muscle building course ever offered. Look at this. The most amazing, absolutely free to introduce you to the most amazing muscle building course ever offered. Hey, fellows, I'll build you a championship body. Who is this person? Ch -ch -ch. Uh, for football, judo, wrestling, baseball. Hmm. Jack Dillinger. Ch -ch -ch. In just 15 minutes a day, three times a week, in the privacy of your own home, Jack Dillinger. I don't know Jack Dillinger. I don't know if we've read his name before. Right? Cool. And it's got some tears. Uh, on the back cover as well right oh look at that dinosaur seven gigantic dinosaurs that's another ad in the in the comic but let's flip through this before we read some of these stories and uh, the stories in this comic book there's uh, a handful of them right there's ambassadors uh, ambassador from Venus the emotion uh, emotion maker king of ants is the one that we're going to read and there's a couple of other stories in this as well right the cover is nicely attached which is great and here's a listing it's got a table of contest lit telling us uh, uh, what comic books there are what uh, stories they have here's another muscle building uh, how to gain up to 50 pounds of mighty muscles nice and I'll show you absolutely free who's this one this person da, 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 da. are you skinny like I was George Jewett before George Jewett there's his name take a look that's the picture George Jewett a 90 pound weakling who became world's strongest man George Jewett I don't know George Jewett I don't think we've ever seen this person before here's another person take a look at this guy I gained 60 pounds of, sh of shapely mighty muscles this can be you in a short time <laughs> So these are uh, what do you call it? pictures that people have sent in? Well, maybe, right? Take a look. Happy customers. I broke. Uh, I broke a world strength record. He says. Cool. Should we read the fine print? Let's read the fine print first. Okay, and then we're gonna flip through this. And here's the here are the stories in the in this book, right? Alarming Tales, November number six. Ambassador from Venus, in his briefcase, the puppet, like man. Uh, the puppet, like man, carried the fate of our world. Wow! Look at this. Oh, we're gonna flip through this. We're gonna read the first story for sure. That looks trippy. Look at that one. The emotion maker. He can make. He can uh, make you happy. He can make you sad. He can make you dread the day you ever met him. That's the second story. Cool. And by the way, the first story, Ambassador from Venus, is uh, written by, I believe, John Severn. Okay. 
uh, pencils by Bernard Bailey inks by Bernard Bailey the second story is uh, Fred Kitta did the pencils and the inks and I don't know I believe it's John Severn writing most of these okay uh, the king of ants and this one the pencils and the inks are Al Williamson and Angelo Torres So the king of ants, the soldier observed the ants and learned a valuable lesson of strategy, right? And the fourth story in this is the strange power of Gary Ford. He was suddenly gifted with new powers and plagued with perils. Cool. Let's read the fine print of this. Alarming Tales, November 1958, Volume 1, Number 6, is published bi monthly. Right? I'm going to bring this close to, to me to read it. Uh, for those watching, apologies if I can get too close to the camera. Super fine print. Right? By Western Tales Incorporated at Meldon. Connecticut editorial advertising and executive offices 1860 Broadway New York 23 New York president Alfred Harvey vice president and editor Leon Harvey vice president and business manager Robert B Harvey entered a second-class matter at the post office Maradon, Maradon, Connecticut, single copy 10 cents, subscription rate 10 issues for $1 in the US and uh, possessions. Elsewhere, $1.50. All names in this periodical are entirely fic uh, fictitious and no identification with actual person is intended. Contents copyright 1958 by Harvey Harvey features syndicate printed in the USA. So there is uh, the Harvey publication. It looks like there's three people from the same family that are involved uh, uh, that put Harvey publications together, right? Very cool. Very cool. Oh, look at this. This is trippy. I have come to warn you, Earth scientists. Okay, gang, should we flip through this or should we just read through this? I'm gonna look at chat. Should we just read through this, gang? You guys let me know. I'm gonna flip the pages. Maybe we look at the advertisements while we flip, right? We don't want too many spoilers, right? Check this out. Look at this Zorro. Read through an order, Graham says. Should we look at the advertisements? Let's do this. Let's flip through this and read the advertisements. We won't spend time with the stories too much. But uh, let's take a look at some of the advertisements. Hey kids, send for the new Walt Disney Zorro. Color television set. Color television set. Complete with eight rolls of color film. Huh. Only one dollar. Presenting... Uh, Seno Zorro, Zorro and the ghost of the mission. I, and one thing that we know of, like right now, comic books are collectible, right? Now consider this, you could have bought 10 of these issues for a dollar, right? Or 10 golden age comics or silver age comics for a dollar for 10 cents, right? And all of those comics would have been selling at a higher price right now. I wonder how much this toy or this color television set is selling to collectibles right look at this thing new you can have hours of fun seeing and showing your own favorite TV star to your friends and family each roll of film is different here are the titles so these are 10 films that recorded on film I'm assuming it's just a roller 
I wonder how much this thing is going for. Right? Check out the next advertisement. Everything you need to enjoy stamp collecting. Nice. Yours for 25 cents. And by the way, the stamp collecting uh, industry, okay, completely collapsed a few years ago. So stamps that uh, were worth a fair bit uh, really dropped in value. So stamp collectors, uh, if it's ever going to pick up again, stamp collecting, I'm not sure what the prices are doing right now, but I know uh, a few years ago I looked into it. The stamp collecting industry completely collapsed. Oh, yeah, we're going to flip through this fast. Look at this amazing stuff. Yeah, we're going to read this in order. Okay, look at this. Not too much advertising. Graham says there's no price information on that. The Zorro television thing. If you can't find it, the odds are it's going for a mint. It would be selling for ridiculous amounts if you can't find it anywhere. What's this thing? Real mobile tank over six foot long. What? Oh, this is like a toy car thing that a kid can sit in and drive around as a tank. Look at this thing. We bring it in. Zoom in, zoom in. Focus, focus. Look at this thing. Large enough for two kids, but can be handled by one. Only four ninety eight. Cute. Sort of for a war thing image, I guess. Develop muscles of steel. Lots of strongman stuff here, eh? Start building a super body in just ten days, only one dollar. So if these are three, so far we've got three different uh muscle building ads here i wonder if they're same company or different looks like they're different most of these comic premiums i think are kits that were made out ah okay Graham says look at the advertisement double page advertisement in the center of the book shop and save by mail you can depend on our advertisers send for these wonderful buys so this is classified ads right Look at this thing. Yours free. Sent for this big, powerful magic magnifier. Ugly backheads out in seconds. Blackheads. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is one of those blackhead sucker things. Ew. Gross. Gross. <laughs> oh, a little wanted ad. Poems wanted. Look at this. Poems wanted to be set to music. Send one or more of your uh, best poems today for free examination. Any subject. Immediate, immediate consideration. Wow. Right? Take a look. It's a record company. So they're looking for songs. Wow. Hey, look at that zenith that's so small last chance for free sample of play credit shoppers what look at that hands tied because you lack a high school diploma oh look at this education one take a look at this important important an education classified thing right hands tied because you lack a high school diploma, you can get a high school education at home for only $6 a month, right? Includes all books, study at your own convenience, progress rapidly, write today for free, sample lesson, no obligation. American school, check this out. American school department 8c10 31 west 47th street new york i wonder what's in these locations now eh? in some of these cities that we're seeing nickels and dimes song poems look at this another one oh it's the same people look at that it's paragraph records on this one 
the poems that they wanted and on the next page again right look at that it's the same company pornograph records made ah wanted to be uh, set to music any subject send poems today immediate consideration five star music masters oh no they're different they're different this uh, phonographic records made is just what they're doing this company here is five star music masters and the first one we read is crown music company so they're competing companies right play the piano very cool 100 toy soldiers toy soldiers a uh, lot in the superhero comics right player classified ads classified ads oh look at this one flip the page look at that men boys here are the biggest exciting adventure stories blast off into space let's get a nice race for the moon what company is that oh that's a thrill that's the same company that these books are so this is uh, their own books that they're promoting right you want to get the most from your money for your money the most action the best illustrations stories that will leave you breathless then these rip roaring comics are for you everyone a winner buy them try them and you'll buy them again so take a look at this race to the moon that's one of the comic book titles they have alarming tales they have this one advertised but this was the last issue right and then they have hand-to-hand -hand combat warfront oh this is the king of ants that we're gonna read we're gonna read this in order i got a feeling we're gonna read this whole thing oh not too many spoilers not too many spoilers i'm flipping this fast what's this guy the bomb man alone so these are uh, written stories this is war satellite football oh here's more color version of the advertisements they had for those uh, comics take a look the fight for this for the spaceways which is what we're in right now politically right already is part of our lives next stop the moon it means thrills and high adventure such as man has never known on earth read about it live it in the first magazine of the space age be sure to get your copy extra excite exciting features the three rocketeers and moon scouts cool 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 i don't know this comic i don't have i don't have this comic yeah i don't think we're going to read the text we're just going to read the comics for sure we'll just read the comics and the stories maybe one day we'll grab a whole bunch of these things and read them all together in one shot right what's this one say this is the war front looks more like a rugged game of football doesn't it except except that the object is this the soldier's hand is worth a king's ransom and public possibly a nation's security this is war you'll thrill to this dramatic account of action among our occupation troops and that's the kicker they're actually calling them occupation troops now back then but they don't do it now take a look at this and then this is the last story right oh, oh no spoilers and the last the ads at the end let's take a look at these things own and fly your own jet engine plane 
<laughs> Look at this. Own and fly your own jet engine plane. Wait, look at this. Jetex, jet engine, and Jetex uh, Skyfighter plane. Only $1.98. You can have your own jet engine for $1.98. It's one of those, uh, what do you call it? Uh, planes you buy, you fill it full of water or air and just press pump it, right? Complete plane, engine and fuel. <laughs> a real jet engine burns solid fuel for maximum thrust works like real air force jets oh i wonder if it's butane they put in there what would it be it would be some kind of fl uh, flammable i guess cool right Seven gigantic dinosaurs for a dollar. I'll take it. How gigantic are they? Did they give us the size of these things? Up to four feet tall. What? No COD, please. Cash on delivery. In each package. So I guess these would be, you just fill them full of air. Giant and flammable. Yeah, there it is giant inflatable toys of prehistoric monsters who ruled the earth millions of years ago right <laughs> Fun. and look at this uh, wow chameleon more classifieds look at this and telescope masks Boats, little engine, talk, sing, play, girls, curl wig. <laughs> These are fine print. Should we do the readings, gangs? Let's do the readings. Let's go. Let's do. So, we're going to read the first story first. Okay. So this is the first story, Ambassador from Venus. Okay, Pencils and Inks by Bernard Bailey. And I believe the story is, could be hard to say, could be John Severn, could be Bernard Bailey. But let's have a read through this. Okay. Ambassador from Venus a most unnatural messenger crashed into a convention of scientists in Washington DC and the impact threw the meeting into a frenzy earthmen listen to me this is a warning the scientists don't panic get the security guard the sky the intruder from space addressed the learned men of science and the message he brought left them speechless don't don't grape at me everything I've told you is true he says he's like a little puppet guy with strings attached to him man eh? Look at that. How would you feel if a man controlled by puppet strings told you how to live your life? Oh, he's holding an orange globe. And what does so, what was so astonishing about the glowing disc he gripped in his hand? astounding about the glowing disc he gripped in his hand you'll find the amazing chill packed answer in 
the ambassador from Venus. That was a little intro to it. A little trailer. Give the full page on this. He was the most important courier of all time, and Earth scientists had good cause for alarm, for this was the ambassador from Venus. I have come to warn you, Earth scientists. Great grief, the scientist says. The thing's being supported by puppet strings. Who is it? What does he want here? It happened that day the great minds of astronomy gathered to probe the problems of space in Washington at long last we have entered the space age it is vital it is a it is vital that we learn as quickly as possible how to adjust to this new era so scientists in a boardroom meeting suddenly the meeting was startled as a eerie buzzing vibr buzzing vibrated the chamber what what's that what's happening great scott rays vibrations from above striking the steps they look out the window Oh wow, look at this. Look at that. So in the middle of the street, there's this guy hanging from puppet strings, glowing. And outside, stunned, citizens saw a most astonishing sight. Look, something materializing in this air in thin air. Everybody's looking. And then There's no need to be alarmed, gentlemen. I have come to attend to your conference and speak before you. <laughs> Why not? Scientists from space, maybe. Inside the, inside, the bizarre figure strode to the speaker's stand. Time is, time is short. I must be brief. I come from out in space. Please heed my words well. Incredible, the scientists say. The hand of the lifelike puppet reached ominously into the case, and you here on Earth will, will soon be joining our great galaxy of planets. My mission is to brief you on your coming journey pulling a disc out of a suitcase oh wow look at this the glowing disc vibrated with some unseen force and abruptly an incredible picture filled the vast chamber observe the planet on on geo Oh, there's explosions all over it. Look at that. Oh, those are UFOs flying off the planet. Take a look. Look at that. Oh, it's being blown up. UFOs are flying off of it. Is it a war? Slowly, the ominous scene faded, and with mechanical movement, the puppet withdrew a second disc. Who are you? What does this? 
all mean the scientist asks my next mind disc is that of the planet Tarto. he pulls out another disc again a third dimensional lifelike picture of scenes one million light years away took form tardo hurtles through space even now a flaming at atomized vanquished planet good grief it's terrible terrible the scientist says fear anger stirred the great scientist's mind as the puppet man there it has happened Tarto has become a dead exploding star so the planet is just burning up the scientists they've sent a the puppet from space to frighten us but why the scientist asks oh the scientists are mad look at that and as the vision dimmed stop this we're men of science also stop treating us like children what is the purpose of all this scientist asks the puppet man wait men of science you must see the next disc it is the most important of all and he pulls out another discs disc from his uh, briefcase then as the next space picture took form it's the earth the scientist says and there's like missiles going towards it they've got those fantastic mind pictures of our own planet another scientist says oh the scientists are mad instantly the sound of explosions rent the room the earth bombarded by each bombs we're being threatened this is their way of telling us how they can destroy us the scientists are saying and there's the earth being bombarded by missiles It is for your own good that I come. You must learn the best way to exist, the puppet man says. Great grief. They must want to control us in some fashion, the scientists reply. And as the puppet moved outside, you of the earth must be awakened to the great life that awaits you when men of Venus come to control your destinies. see how am I how I am controlled by the all-powerful will I need not think or worry I need only obey orders and enjoy life the puppet man says oh there's a bystander thinking so that's it the power that controls that thing seeks to run earth people as puppets also suddenly the power emitting from that mobile TV unit is disrupting one of his puppet strings he's rising on that side of course I think I know their secret one of the scientists says yeah there's a little disruption in the string pulling him from the the TV antennas I guess the TV unit right hurry phone the city lighting company tell the officer officials I want them to do exactly as I say now listen the scientist tells the police officer soon after the excited scientists race after the bizarre dangling figure puppet from outer space 
I am not convinced your I'm not convinced yours is the best life let me see if you can move about everywhere as easily as I can the cops uh, the scientists sitting in the car talking to the puppet guy lead and I shall follow follow you anywhere the puppet guy says so the scientist driving the car and the puppet guy is uh, following him no matter how fast you travel a Venetian can travel faster he says huh. he's setting up a trap they think further and further the scientist leads the dangling figure see I can walk across water on my strings you are a fool not to want to become a puppet also the scientist thinking now it must work it's got to right. now turn on full power so the scientist has uh, drove to a power plant with the puppet guy uh, hanging behind them following him right and he's telling the technicians to turn on the power in the power plant full power let's see what happens let's check it out let's see the whole panel on this right. suddenly generators hum tremendous voltage surges through the comp company apparatus and the puppet strings they've melted broken the scientist says those aren't puppet strings and he's not a puppet the scientist knows something so the puppet strings are cutting and the guy's gonna fall Look at that. beautiful artwork nice movement and the books in the 1950s and 40s as I suspected when that TV power unit weakened one of the supports, those are gravitational rays. Gravitational rays, wow. Help me, help me. I'm too heavy to move on your planet. So the puppet guy's fallen on the ground. The gravity's pulling him down. He can't move around. Gravitational rays. Because gravity on this planet is lighter than ours, because gravity on his planet is lighter than ours, he can't walk without those power beams that moved him it was a bluff a gigantic bluff from space to control us the scientist says please please the power so please pl please release the power so that i can return to venus i won't bother you again the puppet guy says And shortly as the power is turned off a warlord of Venus seeking to fool us as a puppet now how could how could they think we would believe such a thing the scientist says and the other one the other scientist one thing is certain they won't be back and the puppet mask puppet guy just flies off the end that was easily resolved there eh? fun great sci-fi stories eh? I've never read anything like the puppet guy coming from space we've had a lot of alien stories and stuff but nothing like this or I've read a lot of alien stories this was trippy look at his puppet strings the gravitational rays look at that cool hmm, let's check this out oh this is just the two-pager 
oh no these are two one pagers each one of these is a one page story let's read these very cool very cool look at this what is this about moon descends after years of research and planning man is now minutes away from making his first landing in outer space all is quiet inside the rocket ship as the crew await the order from major uh, dwit for their moon descends so the rocket ships going towards the moon rm i wonder what rm stands for that's the earth in the background this is truly an historic occasion men it's hard to believe but we are the first humans of earth to successfully reach the moon they've landed on the moon and that's a huge spaceship you're kind of coming down with the ladder right kind of gives you an eerie feeling major it's the kind of feeling that no matter how quiet and barren it is I feel we are not alone the other astronaut says when are you going to claim this territory sir in just about major I'm getting some heavy reaction on the counter oh that's the other scientist with a little gauge on there right oh look at this there's like dinosaurs on the moon what check this out is it possible that others from earth have landed here too I doubt it every country has made public their plans to reach the moon these reactions are strange I doubt if they're coming from a human being look at that but if it's something else maybe some kind of animal I would have had to it, it would have had to inhabit the moon for millions of years <laughs> and it's dinosaurs the end so that's where the dinosaurs went they went to the moon <laughs> awesome what a trippy little one pager never ever have I read any theories about dinosaurs on the moon that's funny check this one out let's see what this is all about let's get this focused among the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch superstitions and fears about unnatural happenings still exist of course we don't believe in those yarns but after the story who knows it was during a visit to my uncle's farm in Pennsylvania where all Dutch bear barns have unusual symbols painted on the exterior walls so there's a barn he's looking at a barn with a symbol on the barn I was strolling along the edge of the fo forest when I heard footsteps behind me as I turned to greet the uh, oncomer it happened hello what oh it burst apart and the ground is melting around it it's like a fire blazing fire thing going on oh he's running away frightened by the occurrence my feet flew over the ground across the freshly plowed fields and the strange glow was still following me he's like yelling running fast my feet didn't stop till I reached my uncle's house I blurred out my I blurted out my story to him fear struck suddenly in his eyes then vanished quick get a broom don't don't gape do as I say 
There's no time to lose. Bro. Bro. Place it halfway over the door. Why? He asks. So he's outside the door. Place it halfway over the door, he says. That thing can't resist the broom. Believe me, it's the only way to save us. What? And as I watched, the thing scream, swooped down, grabbed the broom, and raced off into the night. As I said, who knows what to believe? The end. <laughs> Supernatural broom, broom collecting. Uh, creatures trippy that's a folklore take a look at this one the emotion maker wow let's read this the emotion maker let's read the little intro to it he could make he could make you laugh cry love hate he could make you a hero or a coward a flick of the dials on his fantastic machine the emotion maker coward yes. manuel is a coward no no coward they're watching a bullfight the crowd is yelling at the matador is that what you call them matador the bulls are running towards them oh look at the scientist he's got a little i guess a motion maker gun or a camera it looks like a sort of a pro projection type of thing in his hand what does this guy say dos puyas stop it You've turned the bravest matador of all Spain into a cringing coward. Huh. This guy knows something. I regret that first day I met David Dubois atop the Eiffel Tower in France. Ah, my American friend, one day all Paris shall lay at my feet. My power shall be shall be felt in all the great cities of the world. Really, he says, I assume you control some giant financial empire, Mr. Dubois. The American says. Mr. Dubois, no, not yet, Monsieur Traveler. Tra tra Travers, Monsieur Travers. No, not yet, Monsieur Travers. But one day soon. Come, you must visit me. Visit with me in my studio. We shall be close friends, he says. The American's thinking. Quite an intriguing character. Interesting character. Looks like my trip to Paris is going to, going to provide a few laughs. scientist lab they've gone to eh? at Dubois bizarre studio I could hardly suppress uh, a smile it is here to my secret uh, rest at uh, rest travers soon I shall unchain my scientific giant for all the world to see American thinking a real crackpot he's probably trying to make gold or something For a month, we were cost. We were constant companions. Then, early one evening, he appeared at my hotel, wide-eyed with excitement. He's coming in with a package. Come, Travers. We are going to the theater to see the greatest actor in all France, Jean Farge. 
oh yes he's winning rave notices playing the part of a coward at the boulevard theater okay let's go oh he's got his little ray gun out instrument shortly in a theater box dubois what in thunder is that thing why are you pointing it at the stage do not fear my friend my machine will not harm jean farge it will merely steal a bit of it a bit of his skill as nervously as i nervously watched dubois operate the operated the strange device the actor no no i beg of you do not harm me the actors mr dubois ah oh, yes farge is indeed the master actor he plays the perfect coward so you got to see the little rays going towards the actor on stage afterwards my incredible friend launched launch still another surprise when we return to the studio to his studio great thunder dubois cut out the mystery and tell me what this mumbo jumbo is all about the american asks and he's pointing towards oh he's pointing towards a flower we see in the next panel in time uh, mr dubois says in time mr travers we have seen the greatest actor in paris now we must visit the bravest bullfighter tonight we leave for spain he says he's uh, projecting the rays onto this flower take a look at that i was too fascinated to resist morning found us in the dressing room of the famous matador manuel the scientist manuel the fairest lady in paris requests the bravest matador in spain to wear her rose in the ring today oh the americans thinking now why that's the rose he had in his studio what could be what could he be giving it why what, what could he be giving it to Manuel for the American thinks shortly the crowd cheered as Manuel met the first bull he's out the cheering crowd all around him in the arena yeah the scientist ah he wears the rose he's all happy the Americans thinking Dubois losing his wits I better drop him as a friend before he does something dangerous oh look at the sweat on the matador's face suddenly as the bull turned to charge Manuel, what feels wrong with him? Oh, his uh, red cape is just dangling there. He's not prepared. No, no, Manuel says. Help me. Don't let the bull harm me, Manuel says. He's freaked out and he's wearing the rose. Oh, look at the crowd. They're all throwing things at him. They're not happy with this cowardice. The in arena went wild. The, inc the incredible had happened. Spain's famed matador was a coward. The American grabs the scientist by the, by, the, by the collar. That rose somehow it made Manuel a coward. How? How did you do it? He asks. The scientist, aha, I stole the cowardly emotion of Jean Farge and gave it to Manuel. For all science, someone must suffer my friend the crowds throwing things at the matador coward hiss the matador's cowering in the arena on his knees 
Look at that. The other matador is coming to help him or remove him. Anger, disgust, fear welled up inside me as Dubois gleefully explained his secret. You see, my friend, like sun draws water from the clouds, I draw emotions from people's people's manual breathe breathe not only the aroma of a rose but the scent of a coward also ah. Dubois you're breaking the laws of nature I'll have nothing more to do with you or your terrible experiment the American says the scientist very well tra travers but you are a fool I now I not now have power over every man on earth i'll sell emotions as the as the baker sells different breads wow that's a super villain power oh look at him let's take a look let's take a look in the days to follow i couldn't shut dubois on his terrible uh, or his terrible device from my mind evidence of his work were everywhere people watching a parachute uh, guy coming down near the Eiffel Tower why it's Papa Butch Butch camp he's jumped from the tower Wow an old man with the courage of a uh, paratrooper could this be some of his some of Dubois work so an old man jumped from the Eiffel Tower and opened up the parachute. I forget what that's called. Hate struck in a museum. I hate this museum. I hate it. Someone's breaking the museum displays. The museum curator, great grief. He's the most mild mattered man alive what's happened to him wow he just destroyed a display greed sees the president of a bank <laughs> look at that the president of the bank is coming out of the vault with bags of money it's mine do you understand all the bank's money all the bank's money belongs to me alone sacri bleu our president has lost his senses <laughs> funny uncontrollable sadness swept the gala paris ball wow look at all the people just sad and crying finally the moment came when i could stand no more He's, test, he's testing his terrible power everywhere. It's just a matter of time before someone is killed or, or injured. Artist ball ends in tears, the newspaper says. I'm the only person who knows his secret and it's up to me to stop him. I can't have him arrested. Nobody would believe me. Yes. But perhaps there is one way to stop his devilish work. He thinks. That night, I waited until the lights of Dubois' laboratory blinked out and the Americans in his lab. He must have the vial I want among his emotion bottles. He's sneaking in in the dark. What's he grabbing what's he grabbing let's check cautiously I played my uh, I played my flashlight beam along the row of bottles until yes yes this is the one he's grabbing a bottle remembering each move the Bois made I duplicated them to the letter I mustn't make the smallest mistake 
this is the one chance to save us all from Dubois fearsome device he's messing around with it then then I reversed his emotion device as I had seen him do it must work it must he thinks so he poured a little bit of liquid into the device take a look at that he's pouring a little bit of liquid into the device and while Dubois is sleeping he's uh, exposing him to the rays let's see Dubois is in his lab long minutes later Dubois woke had I succeeded Dubois is in his lab such a pleasant rest I feel so relaxed at peace with the world Dubois thinks or says for a long moment he studied his lot of equipment then what a beast I've been to threaten human nature tinkering with emotions is an insult to humanity I destroy my work forever oh he's just trashing his own lab it worked the American thinks Ah, oh, look at Dubois' face. He's totally happy in bliss. I'm happy at long last. I'm really happy. Yes, Dubois, you're happy through no fault of your own. You really devolved this, developed this emotion because of the hate that festered within you. The Americans thinking in the background. But now it saved you from yourself brotherly love so the so the vial that he picked up that had the emotion in it that he poured into the uh what do you call it the gadget was called brotherly love emotion haha <laughs> bliss cute cute happy ending happy ending Oh, the king of ants. We're into the king of ants story. The prototype for ants, man. Let's have a read through this. Okay. It's a little. There we go. Let's get this in focus. I was in the tropics visiting my friend, Dr. Harry Cross at the plantation ants are fascinating creatures jack as an ex-army officer you'd be interested in studying their military pow prow prowls the guy says yeah i recall back home they had special ants brought in to combat bull bull weevils bull we weevils that's roughly my job here um um i'm to determine which ants are good for the plantation and which are bad the good ones will remain but the bad ones will have to be driven off with some with smoke bombs a load of these bombs will arrive by jeep tomorrow war against the ants hey that should be interesting he says and that's how quite simply it all began little did i know that by nightfall i would be able to say what no man could ever say that i was the king of ants doc these little these little fellows are absolutely fascinating the guy says the ex-soldier the more you study them the more you become intrigued by them the scientist says dr Gr cross the plantation is being attacked by raiders one of the plantation worker comes in 
Nice paddle. Right. Nice paddle. Look at all the library, the books. There's the plant. Uh, what do you call it? Not the plant. The, the ant's farm in his lab, right? In a glass container. That's cool. The raiders were coastal bandits who swept down in hordes upon unsuspecting plantations. Doc, from the sound of the gunfire, I'd say there aren't too many of them. Right, Jack, their scouting party sent to pin us down until the main party arrives. So there's being attacked by bandits. What did this guy say? Attacked by raiders. So the guy was warning that raiders are attacking them. And they're actual raiders. Right? Look at that. A scouting party. But even their scout party outnumber the men we have here. The scientist says. I've been with troops in battle who were outnumbered but somehow came through. Gather your men. I'll round up all the weapons we have on hand, the soldier says. As I raced back through the lab, a shot ex exploded some vials on the shelf above me. There's an explosion, it gets thrown back. Something in the chemicals seemed to weaken me, and I leaned on the lab bench. I found myself staring fixedly at the scurrying ants odd very odd i feel strange different something's happening to me maybe something caused by the chemicals he says i strain to call out for doc cross but couldn't utter a single murmur and I seem to be getting smaller and still smaller, 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 smaller. Doc, Doc, where are you? Great guns. What happened to me? He's like super tiny, crazy tiny. He's Ant-Man, right? Take a look at the size of the ant. Wow. He's like about half the size of the ant. Take a look at that beautiful silhouette. Whoa. I heard strange, almost musical humming sounds. And then I saw them too late. The ants have shrunk to microscopic size. I'm smaller even, even than the ants. And by Harry, they're making, they're making me prisoner. They're grabbing him. I was as helpless as a rag doll in a child's clutches but then their grip suddenly relaxed and I saw why a beetle but it's not the small insect I normally knew it's as big as a rhino right now and it's got to it's got the ants worried The ants were few in number, uh, in number, merely a patrol, and were no match for the oncoming beetle, and neither was I a match for it, unless, unless I can make a workable sword out of this thorn. So it cuts a thorn from a plant. Look at the beetle.
with thorn spear in hand i climbed upon a raised twig raced along to a point above the beetle then leaped what i wouldn't give for an m1 rifle or a grenade now captain jack flair flaherty u.s infantry fighting with a thorn I landed with a crash atop the beetle, barely missing the missing the poised pincers. And though the thorn sp uh, spear was broken, it had done its work. The strange humming sound is changed its its tone. What are they up to now? Oh, the ants come over. They pick them up. Once again, they took hold of me, but more gently this time. And they bore me away now not as their prisoner but as a friend yes i've become their champion he's riding the end take a look ah they put him on a chair check this out I totally forgotten this. Let's zoom into this. They bore me to their colony where I was received by the others with loud humming acclaim. Following a brief parade, I was placed in what appeared to be a throne room. Great guns. Now I understand. They're making me their king. <laughs> for good i was brought tasty for food i was brought tasty honey and other tidbits which i didn't recognize but enjoyed i witnessed them at work saw how they built roads by removing obstacles in their path they have tremendous strength an uncanny intelligence and I led them on hunting hunting forays look at them go rabbits are running away the birds are flying away the rabbits as big as a dinosaur and the bird as big as a rock then i knew what made the bird take the take to wing and the rabbit scurry away coming towards us were those dreaded raiders of the insect insect world the mighty driver ants the raider ants will wipe out our entire colony we haven't got a chance he says but then I witnessed unusual strategy. My ant friends were gathering choice morsels and placing them in the path of the driver army. It wouldn't even take army training to see through what they're up to. What were they doing? The enemy fought over the morsels, giving my friends time to bring up their main force oh those guys are fighting the ants are fighting each other the invading ants for the food haha <laughs> but i knew there was no time for that so i hurriedly went about starting a small fire by striking stones together Here's where I can help out again. Start a fire and set the dry moss ablaze, he says. The wind is just right, cough, cough, and the smoke's turning them back. So he built a fire wall to protect his colony. Jack, Jack, oh, you are right. Someone's calling out. became bigger 
I came to suddenly back in the lab back to normal size thank heavens the chemicals were harmless hurry Jack the guns we need guns the main raider party will be here soon raiders sure look doc don't ask questions get every possible thing of value on the plantation I've got a plan we took money jewelry trinkets made out our made our way into the jungle and flung it in the path of the oncoming raiders Jack your strategy is working they're fighting over the valuables that'll give us precious time it's not my strategy doc he says yes we got our precious time and when the jeep arrived with the smoke bombs we routed the raiders just as i had seen other other raiders routed once before <laughs> he's talking about the ads your military training sure saved us jack yes military training learned in the strangest army i've ever known the soldier says later when i told the doc cross when i told doc cross my phenomenal experience in that far far away world of course the chemicals could have brought on a sort of delirium that made you dream all that or maybe it was a sort of a self-hypnosis brought on by your fascination with the ants the doctors the doc says don't burst the beautiful bubble doc i like to think i was there after all who doesn't like to be a king even for a day the soldier says so he was hallucinating it right and you can bet your bottom dollar on one thing i'm sure careful nowadays about stepping on ants any ants the end so that I would consider definitely to be an Ant-Man prototype. The only catch is he didn't actually shrink in size. He hallucinated it, right? Because he came to and the doc's still in the lab. Right. Very cool. I'd forgotten about the throne. And I actually forgot about the hallucination. I thought he actually shrunk. Right? Very cool, very cool. We're gonna skip the the long text stories. Okay, we're gonna read the comic. And this is the last uh, story in this comic. Right? Let's read this guy, see where it takes us. It seemed that no walls could withstand the strange power of Gary Ford. Who is this Gary Ford? So this story is called The Strange Power of Gary Ford. This is what I call a first rate break. Funny though, there's no mention on the map of a city located at this point of the Sahara. So he's riding a little bike in the Sahara, comes across this magnificent city. Look at this thing. What a grand city. It's almost like a castle. And an oasis, really. thirsting and we wearied by the sun burning down on the endless desert waste the adventurer drove into the marketplace and drank his fill 
Oh, he's gone to the well. He's just put his face in the well and just drinking up the water, right? What did they say? They're beckoning me to follow them. Well, why not? They seem friendly. There's a whole bunch of Arabs telling them, come over. It was while he was uh, exploring the fabulous city's beauty that Gary Ford made a strange, startling discovery. I'm walking right through the wall of a building. Whoa, what? Take a look at that. He's actually going through the building. What? That's trippy. Maybe it's a mirage, but he drank the water. He quenched his thirst. The well might be real. He passed through several more walls before uh, suspecting the answer to his sudden power. I can only, it can only have been caused by the water I drank from the fountain. Wow. Apparently, the water has no effect on the natives because they're used to drinking it this must be their their sheik's palace oh they've come up to another palace that's where the flags were right did the water give them the power it looks like it led at once to the presence of sheik abdul Rahan, Gary Ford walked through the pillars to show off his power. Wow. Look at him go through. We bid you welcome. My daughter and I, you will do us honor to accept our hospitality, the sheik says. Looks as if my little act has impressed them plenty. <laughs> walking through the pillar he gets a little glow walking through it eh? oh look at all the jewels Gary saw that the sheik's daughter was an, was attractive and he saw something else chest full of gems wow look at that that's a lot of jewels <laughs> oh there's a couple of girls at play here look at this what's going on as time went on gary pretended to be in love with sheik abdullah's daughter that he might be welcome at the palace even longer someday i may be able to prove myself worthy of you sira your love is enough proof for me, Gary, the sheik's daughter says. But soon he met a servant girl in the great palace, an outsider like himself. Red-headed Arabian girl, he asks. Red-headed, yes, Arabian, no, the girl says. Look at that. The sheik's daughter, black hair, the servant, redhead. Uh oh love triangle a yank girl and red is my favorite color honey you and I are going to be great friends he says the girl replies local gossip has it you and his nibs daughter are like that I just work here mr. Ford if I so much as smile at you I'll be in, in for trouble she says 
In spite of herself, Joyce Flynn quickly fell in love with Gary, and he with her. Gary, I'm afraid of what may happen if Sarah finds out. What can we do? Leave here. Leave here to leave her. Leave her to very rich people. Leave leave here to very oh, leave here to very rich people. If you're game, he says, oh, he wants to steal some jewels, I think. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's check this out. Sheikh Abdullah's gems could keep us in luxury for the rest of our lives, Joyce. Steal, Gary? Is that the only way there is for us? She says. Look at this beautiful oasis. Look at that. It's like paradise. A few nights later, Gary and Joyce filled his uh, knapsack with gems and fled the palace. They're running away. Sound the alarm. They're making off with Abdullah's treasure. People are sounding the alarm. They know they're stealing it. We'll have to make a run for it, Joyce. Off they go. What's this? Quickly, Joyce, around the corner. I've got to, I've got, we've got to separate. I'll lead them after me while you escape. No, Gary, she says, don't argue. Find a horse and ride eastward to Cairo. I'll meet you there within two days, he says. I have the horse I came here on. But what if they catch you, she says. They can't, ca they can't catch me, Joyce. I have the power to avoid them. Be careful, darling. I'll be waiting for you, she says. going through the walls look at that Gary Ford headed for the market uh, place where his motorcycle still stood he dashed through building walls to escape his pursuers oh look at the people in the back with swords and stuff chasing him look at that oh they're coming after him coming after the little thief made it now baby let's see him catch us ah oh, he's riding his motorbike and the people just came through with the swords i think one guy in the back is a rifle look at that then check this out then as he was about to ride away the sheik his troops they vanished and now the buildings are starting to disappear. Oh, look at that. No more city, no more palace. Oh, that's the last page. one by one by one buildings faded into nothingness even the fountain is gone just a small oasis in its place until the city and its cobble streets were gone the startled eyes of gary ford beheld only dunes and palms and desert waste no wonder i could walk through the walls they were never there it was all a mirage the gems they're nothing but sand I talk with people but I heard them only because I believe they really existed he says look at him he's emptying the his sack it's just sand coming out
and Joyce, then she was an illusion too, he thinks. As Gary Force sped westward, away from Cairo, he thought not of gems he'd never have. Riches don't seem important now. If only Joyce had been real, how good, how good life would have been married to a girl like her. He rides away. But the panels, oh, Joyce was real. Look at this. Joyce is on a horse. Someone else had witnessed the disappearance of the fabulous desert city. I never wanted gems. Nothing would have mattered if only Gary hadn't been just another mirage. Oh, she thinks it's a mirage too. Joyce Flynn urged her horse eastward toward Cairo, away from the love she'd never see again. My life would be complete if I could have married a man like that. Oh, the end. That's a great ending. Fantastic ending. What a great story. Right. I don't like Gary. What a thief. Two timing thief. Right? What a guy. He stole the jewels of people that were totally hospitable to him, right? Oh, he got his just desserts though, right? He lost the girl of his dreams. Too bad about the girl though. She was making a wrong decision anyway. Gary was not worth it. <laughs> that was a great story that was cool what a great book what a great book i'm gonna to try to get my hands on this whole series really alarming tales i don't think it's going for too too big of a price it might be i don't know i don't know what they're doing with the prices but this is issue number six right so there's five other ones that jack kirby worked on uh, fantastic stories fantastic stories I hope you guys enjoyed the reading gang and uh, what we're gonna do is tomorrow we're gonna read uh, Adam age combat okay and this book that we just read right now was alarming tales number six from 1958 and the artists that have worked on this is John Severn uh, Ray Bailey Fred Kidda Paul Riemann Al Williamson Angelo Torres and it contains four stories one of them being the Ant-Man prototype fun 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 so what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna go back to the live stream chat gang let me turn on my camera I'm gonna turn on the notifications turn on the camera <laughs> hi gang I hope you guys liked it. That was fantastic. So much fun. Wow, look at all the chat. Wow, wow, wow. Is the rest of the series priced appropriately? This is all very pre prescient concerning our conversation yesterday. Yeah, this was fantastic. Yesterday we had the uh, sort of a discussion about uh, alternate states of being and uh, alternate dimensions and aliens and stuff very very uh, much related to what we talked about right fantastic spot of tea how are you doing I'll have to go back and rewatch this looks really cool it was really cool spot of tea fantastic really beautiful beautiful right beautiful beautiful <laughs> loved it loved it case man fun let me put this here gang awesome put it like this so you don't get the reflection you can see the covers nicely and tomorrow we read we reread Adam H combat how's our time oh not bad Two hours and 15 minutes we scheduled two hours for this fun <laughs> this year was a wander I don't know what that means what does that mean elder God you got a little star there wonder 
fun gang fun i hope you guys like the reading i enjoyed it very much very much fun times so how about we call the stream gang we'll uh we'll meet again here tomorrow at 10 a.m awesome i look forward to it awesome awesome tomorrow at 10 a.m my time right uh pst pdt west coast canada and for those watching this video either live or you're going to be watching on a bit shoot or youtube uh catholic traditionalist have a great afternoon folks pax vobis come you too catholic traditionalist i'll try to be on time okay spot of tea i am on patreon if you want to follow this work support this work patreon is a fantastic way to do so we are live streaming this on twitch if you want to watch these streams live twitch is where you want to be at i do announce these streams on twitter gabs mine vk and elo and all the links will be in the description of this video thank you guys as well spider-man elder god spot of tea catholic traditionalist we got full-on mods here the mods you guys are loving these uh comic book readings eh fantastic comic book aficionados <laughs> lark hey chicho showing off your comic book collection sweet yeah we just did a nice reading x i'm glad you're still around brother and what do we got we will be loading the audio on soundcloud okay i'll i think i'm gonna load it on uh might as well have it up there if people want to listen to it listen to a comic book reading of a 1958 science fiction comic book reading anthology right uh great comic book great comic books with brilliant covers with brilliant covers and this video will be loaded on bitshoot and youtube okay uh aside from that thank you for being here gang mods thank you for taking care of business i don't know if there's any business that needed to take to be taken care of but maybe there was maybe there was okay uh and i'll see you guys tomorrow for our next reading okay no business awesome graham i'll definitely be here awesome gang awesome gang. hope you guys have a fantastic saturday bye everyone